It was Halloween on Sunday, but the scares ain't over yet, folks. An evil force is rising in power, set on devouring the very essence of your life force. You can run, you can hide, but there's no escaping it. No matter what you do, this relentless force will catch us all. So grab yourself a pillow to cover your eyes, because ladies and gentlemen, this one is going to be terrifying. But like any good story on this channel, it all starts with a beat. For one issue, I'm facing the man the street, investors is inflation. We're paying more for just about everything. Households facing a cost of living squeeze. And it's likely to rise further. Yeah. Get prepared, get prepared. The strength of a nation's currency is based on the strength of that nation's economy. Mainstream media will have you thinking that inflation is here to slash at your investments and murder any hope of a return that you did have. The spectral force that is inflation, and more importantly, how we should react to it, is widely disagreed on. And it isn't as simple as just running upstairs, hiding under your bed and hoping for the best. You should never run upstairs. So in today's video, I'm reminiscent of a scene from 90s teen horror slasher Scream. Let's explore the rules to successfully navigate inflation. There are certain rules that one must abide by. Well, let's start with number one. Know what is causing the inflation. There's two main drivers for inflation. Your first being called cost push inflation. Rising commodity prices mean the cost of doing and making things goes up. The best example here is oil, as a rise in oil prices basically affects every industry. And the cost of transporting goods and products increases as a result of fuel costing more. So for this reason, a rise in oil prices is almost seen like a tax on everyone, both consumers and businesses alike. So if the cost of raw materials increases, so does the cost of anything associated with that raw material, causing inflation. Demand pull inflation. This can occur in a country when demand rises, but supply can't match that demand. This can be caused by, for example, a sharp increase in the monetary supply by a central bank. Basically, if central banks are just printing a load of extra cash and dumping it into the system. This article by PIMCO, linked below for you, describes it as too many dollars chasing too few goods. Hold on, wait a second. Rising commodity prices caused by a globally affected supply chain. Now it's one of the world's most important shipping routes and it's blocked. Britain's economic recovery is being held back by labour shortages. So we're the closest not coping than we've ever been. No chicken. No chicken. And more money printed in the last 24 months than ever before. I will soon be taking emergency action, which is unprecedented, to provide financial relief. So this is why we're likely seeing high inflation figures at the moment, because we're kind of being squeezed from both sides. The important thing to kind of figure out here is how long this inflation is likely to last. Is it temporary high spike in inflation or is this something that's going to be with us long term? A short blip in the supply chain or something much more likely to stick around. Understanding this then makes rule two easier to act on. Number two. It isn't inflation that hurts your investments, it's how central banks respond to inflation that does. It wasn't answering the phone that doomed Sarah Michelle Gellar, it was a decision to run up the stairs. What did I say about running upstairs? But anyway, that aside, here's what I mean when it comes to central banks and inflation. Inflation has little benefits for the consumer, for the average person buying products in the street. What you could have bought yesterday for one amount now costs you more than that. So unless your income has risen in line with that inflation, you're directly poorer as a result. Inflation erodes purchasing power over time and that is not good for us as consumers. But as investors who own assets, then inflation could actually be a good thing. House prices can increase as the cost to build new homes goes up. And equities and shares can do well over long time horizons versus inflation as businesses can just up their prices. But if inflation gets out of hand and the cost of things is rising too fast for us as consumers to keep up, then central banks will have to step in to slow it down. So everything doesn't become wildly overpriced. One way that they can do that is by upping interest rates, which currently sit at near historic lows. If interest rates rise, money becomes more expensive to borrow, so that means your mortgage costs will go up. But it's also worth noting that you're not the only one with a load of debt round your neck. A lot of people think Rishi's plan is to let inflation erode away the UK's massive debt pile. But if there is runaway inflation, it's likely that central banks will have to increase interest rates in order to slow it down. Now, this could really have an effect on asset prices like homes and stocks and shares. But one that's easy to understand in relation to the stock market is one of the explanations as to why the stock market's been so good to us for so long. And that's because there's nowhere better to put your cash. What are you gonna do with your money? Stick it in a bank on a basically 0% interest rate and let inflation erode it away. You're kind of forced into the stock market to see any form of return on your cash at the moment. Now, if interest rates rise, you might think, well, now I get a safer return in the bank that is at a better level than it was before. So I'll take some of my cash out of the stock market, put it into a more predictable investment like a bond. On screen is a table that shows the relationship between the PE ratio of the S&P 500 and 10-year treasury bonds. 
This might sound complicated, but honestly it isn't. So first of all, a PE ratio is just a measure kind of how expensive a business is. If a business is $100 a share and they earn $4 in income for every share, that's 100 divided by four, that's 25. So that means your PE ratio would be 25 in that case. Or another way to explain that is, it's gonna take 25 years of earnings accumulated to pay back that 100 pound investment. Typically, the higher the PE ratio, the more expensive the business is. And 10-year treasury bonds are loans issued to the American government and are basically seen as the benchmark for safe investments. The table shows when interest rates rise and the returns on these 10-year bonds become more attractive, the PE of the S&P 500 falls. Now that might sound brilliant, you know, great, these businesses are now cheaper to buy, but what cheaper actually means is the share price has likely fallen. It's now cheaper to secure the income of those businesses because the share price has come down as a result of the interest rates going up and more people go into 10-year treasury bonds instead, which provide a secure return. Now that's gonna look awful for your portfolio on paper, but it might actually present a nice buying opportunity for you because the businesses that you were buying before are now discounted in value relative to what they were before. Number three. Survive the sequel by studying the past episodes. Okay, let's get down to business. The way I see it, someone's out to make a sequel. This is not the first time we've seen high inflation figures, far from it. Inflation robs every American, every one of you. And by the time the 70s ended, it was a total mess. It's also not the first time that we face threats of rising interest rates. So by looking at the past, we can look at strategies and asset allocation that has proved a good hedge against inflation and rising interest rates in the past. For example, equities or stocks and shares may suffer from a short-term spike in inflation, especially if that inflation is the result of a cost push as prices suddenly increase for raw materials. Amazon and Apple just had disappointing earning results impacting their share prices, mainly because of supply issues hurting their bottom line. Businesses are squeezed in the short term because it now costs them more to get hold of the goods that they need to provide their services. But in the long term, equities and stocks have provided a good hedge against inflation because, to be blunt, businesses can just put their prices up. Certain sectors are better at this than others. Consumer staples like things we need regardless of the cost, food, cleaning products, tend to do well as an increase in the cost across the board won't result in a drop in demand. But on the whole, stocks in the long term tend to outpace inflation as their costs increase to match it. There are other investments that are touted as good hedges against inflation. Gold, and more recently, Bitcoin. These assets have qualities about them that many people say make them a really good store of value, especially in times when loads of money's been absolutely dumped into the system. The issue is they can have a speculative element to them. It isn't as simple as saying that these two assets just move with inflation. Now, while that could be said to be true in the long term, in the short term, it can be completely the other way. In 1975, 1981, 1989 and 1990, the price of gold actually fell as inflation rose. Research conducted by Duke University professor Campbell Harvey and Claude Herb actually concluded that gold is really good at protecting value and hedging against inflation in time periods of 100 years or more. Not something that's <laughs> very useful to us as investors right now, is it? Assets like gold and Bitcoin could be good for staving off inflation risk in a portfolio, but understand that they carry their own risk. Now, one option you could look at is an inflation-linked bond. You'll find these on most trading apps. Like on Free Trade, you have indexed UK gilts. The idea here is they are linked to inflation and as a result, look to hedge against it. Another common strategy is to invest in commodities themselves. That makes sense because prices of things are going up due to the raw materials making them increasing in value. You could then invest in those raw materials via something like an exchange-traded commodity. Just type ETC into your platform of choice. I think looking at all of this, what became apparent is the importance of diversification for most of us. A broad portfolio of things like REITs, gold, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, ETCs, if that's your thing, and most importantly, a basket of globally diversified stocks. Inflation may kick America's butt. After all, it's them who are treating dollars like it's monopoly money. But it could serve to benefit the emerging markets as the dollar weakens and those emerging markets can charge more for their exports. This is why I like my world funds. They might not provide the best return every single year, but they kind of cover all the bases and remove a lot of the head scratching when situations like this occur. Inflation is such a complex topic and to invest around it, you need a wide understanding of inflationary factors, trade relationships, the overall economy, and also central bank policy. It just isn't possible to be like, inflation is rising, right, I'll do this. It just isn't that simple. Clickbait. The sad thing is, inflation is most likely gonna affect your investments by reducing the amount of money that you have to invest each month. In times of high inflation, the cost of living is likely going to take a pound in. Add to this increased taxes as well, and the average UK household, which I think is a lot of the people watching this video, are gonna feel pinched. The only way to counteract this is either to increase your earnings, 
which is easier said than done, or increase your net worth in line with inflation. And the best way to do that? You're in this strip club shaking it for dollar bills. Yeah, I mean, that's one option, but investing still remains one of the best ways for average people like ourselves to increase our net worth over time, even in times of high inflation. If you're an index fund investor, inflation and the current state of the economy should act as something interesting to look out of the window of your investing vehicle as you just keep driving forward down that long winding road that is passive investing long term. For those of you who are more actively picking stocks, you should probably focus on companies that have an ability to raise prices. If inflation does persist and central banks have to raise interest rates to kind of slow it down, then expect to drop in asset prices, including in the stock market, because borrowing becomes more expensive and other more secure investments become more attractive to investors. But that's no reason to panic. That shouldn't stop you from doing what you do. Here is all of the yearly inflation rates going all the way back to 1920. And here is the historical performance of the S&P 500 over the same time period. Don't let jump scares by the media make you question what you are doing. This ain't screen one, we know the rules by now. Invest consistently and long term in low cost investments, buy businesses with good earning potential that look like they can improve that going forwards. Don't go upstairs and hit him again so he doesn't get back up. I'll be right back. Oh.